Welcome back to the 2021 Big East Women's Soccer Championship sponsored by Jeep. We are at Chapey Field for the second semifinal of the day. It is the Connecticut Huskies and the Butler Bulldogs, two heavyweights in this conference, squaring off for the right to meet Georgetown on Championship Sunday. Welcome, everybody. I'm John Fanta, joined by Mike Mancuso. The Hoyas starting the day in dramatic fashion, just 35 ticks into overtime, getting a penalty kick. Julia Lease finishing it, going to the right side and beating the Creighton keeper. Georgetown marches on to a fifth straight Big East championship game. But in this meeting, you have the Bulldogs and the Huskies, two teams who have put up strong seasons, two strong RPI teams. Let's start with Connecticut back in the Big East Conference, and now Margaret Rodriguez has them back in the Big East Tournament. Yeah, UConn 8-2-1 on the season, making their 20th appearance in the Big East Tournament. Of course, they're just coming back over from the AAC. This is their first season back in the Big East. They last won the tournament in 2004, also won in 2002, and this season have been one of the premier teams in the Big East, defensively giving up just five goals in those 11 games. That's a .43 goals against average. The Huskies have been so controlling defensively. Randy Palacios, the Big East co-goalkeeper of the year. And Butler counters with the other goalkeeper of the year in this conference in Stephanie Rodriguez and a potent offense, one of the best in women's college soccer. Yeah, their offense has been absolutely on fire this year, averaging 3.6 goals per game. That's second best, second best in the entire nation. They come into this one 9-1-0 on the season. This is their seventh appearance in the Big East Tournament. They last won their only title in 2015, and they are powered by a duo of first-teamers and Katie Soderstrom and Anya Savage, the only two players in the Big East to score a hat trick this season. 17 combined wins between these two teams, just three losses. They have both been dominant, both deserve to be here, and this sets up for a fascinating battle. The first meeting ever between Connecticut and Butler. It comes for a ticket to the Big East title match. The kick is next. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Though we are many, we are part of something. A force bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. As Bulldogs, we believe in the Butler way, in doing more than our best, in putting team above self, and unleashing our strengths for the greater good. We're selfless. We're united, we're unwavering, now more than ever. Getting set for kickoff between UConn and Butler in the Big East Women's Soccer Semifinals. Let's take a look at the starting 11 for both sides for Connecticut a 4-3-3 formation. Yeah, Randy Palacios, a co-goalkeeper of the year, just a .31 goals against average, has allowed just five goals on the season. She anchors that defense for head coach Margaret Rodriguez now in her third season. For Butler, they run a 3-4-3, and that's something that Margaret Rodriguez is really intrigued by. The freedom that Butler utilizes on their attack, Mike, something that the Huskies are really trying to prepare for because you talked about it. It's not just Savage and Soderstrom. Yeah, it really isn't. And uh, much like UConn also, it starts in the back. Stephanie Rodriguez, another co-goalkeeper of the year. So you get the top two goalkeepers in the conference going head-to-head. -head, but 
boy, will they both be tested here today. Some very potent offenses. UConn averaging just under two goals per game. They have outscored opponents 25. And again, Butler has outscored opponents 36-6 to in their 10 games this season. It is really amazing when you look at Butler from top to bottom. 14 different players have tallied a goal, and you have Soderstrom and Savage at the top with points, with Anya Savage holding 19, Soderstrom with 15. How about the dynamic freshman Allie Leonard and what she's been able to add? Yeah, Leonard combined five goals, three assists for her for 13 points on 15 shots, and two of those five goals game winners for the freshman out of Troy, Michigan. The Huskies in their staple, UConn Blue. See Randy Palacios, Big East Cole, goalkeeper of the year, heading back. She's confident, composed, went through some lows to get to this high. Yeah, she certainly did. You go back to that game against Georgetown where UConn lost in overtime 2-1, to one, and by many accounts, it was a little bit of a soft goal that she let in. She really felt that she let the team down, but her teammates were able to rally around her. her coaching staff led by Margaret Rodriguez really propped her up and said, you know what, you're going to come up big at some point this season. And boy, did she do that, saving a PK against Providence. And that really became the difference on how UConn was able to earn this spot in the Big East Tournament. Winner meets Georgetown on Sunday. What in particular, Mike, are you looking at early in this match that you think could be the difference? Well, you know, in speaking to the coaches, you know, we talked with Coach Rodriguez. She felt one of the most important things for them was to be disciplined with their shape, especially defensively when Butler has possession. They also want to defend higher up try to pressure Butler early, force some of those backs into some errors, and of course, as many games come down to, set pieces. And that's being good inside the 18s, whether it's defending free kicks and corners or taking free kicks and corners, putting balls into dangerous areas in your opponent's 18. On the other side, for Butler, you know, their coaching staff was talking about their decision making, how they were gonna make those quick decisions against the UConn press. UConn loves to press high with their attacking midfielders and their weak side forwards. How would their defenders combat that? Also, they want to try to set up some overloads on the far side of the field, get wide, try to get into 1v1 or 2v1 situations against their outside backs. And of course, they want to stop UConn's counterattack with their own press. So when they turn it over, they want to immediately put some pressure on those UConn players. To the six, a header right off the bat, and that one drilled away by the Huskies. Yeah, Melina Cousy's coming over. You can notice her out there has kind of the big wrap on her right arm. But boy, did she come in with force to clear that one away so it could not do any damage inside the area. UConn trying to play the offside trap that time. This one sent in, and nearly an own goal. It's just rolling away for a corner, but my goodness, the Butler Bulldogs are showing us why they've been one of the top offenses in the country. Yeah, nearly disaster here. As it played off, not with a lot of pace there, as it was played across by Anya Savage, but Jacqueline Harnett struggled to get a good, solid first touch, nearly put it past her own keeper, Randy Palacios, and boy, would that have been the worst possible start for the Huskies. We'll see if they can get back on track on the first corner for Butler today. Kowalski taking, goes to the back post, it's headed away. Evilard doing well to defend that one and put it out of harm's way. Another dangerous ball in this one. Just rolls off. Well, and here you can see already early on, not even barely three minutes in, and, and Butler able to get that ball wide and put in some dangerous crosses into the area. Exactly what they're wanting to do out there. We'll see if UConn can make some adjustments and try to get some possession going. UConn's hardly been able to connect a couple of passes so far here. This Huskies team, eight, two, and one on the campaign. They gave Georgetown a great test. 
earlier this season, just falling 2-1 to one in overtime. But they believe they can play with anybody. An RPI just outside the top 30. And the only two losses coming to Georgetown and at Providence right here at Chappie. But six all-conference selections. And they've had nine different goal scorers on their season while putting up clean sheets, being one of the best defensive teams in the conference as well. And one of the biggest strengths for this UConn team is their midfield. That's where the majority of their playmakers are as the Huskies here struggling again to get it out of the back as that one was read nicely by Savage. But again, despite the youth in the midfield, it has been one of their strengths. They've been kind of in sync since the beginning of the season. And look for UConn to try to connect the backs through the midfield. They usually don't like to bypass them and send those long balls deep from the back line, but they like to work it through players like Lucy Capadonna, Jess Mazzo, and of course, Emma Zaccanini. So we'll see how UConn is able to work it through that middle portion of the field and try to get it up front. The players like Kess Elmore. Carol Long looking up ahead to Kess Elmore. Elmore with some fancy footwork, and it's drilled back towards the midfield. This UConn team, even though Oof. Butler started this with a flurry, they wanted a handball that time, didn't get it. The Huskies defensively, eight clean sheets on the season. And when you only play 11 times, that speaks volumes about their capabilities. And even though Butler comes out with that initial blitz, Mike, they've been a team that's been really locked in on the defensive side. Yeah, they've been able to get locked in down deep and you know, credit that entire back line. It's, it's really anchored by Molina Kuzis, first team, all Big East. You see her right now about to take this free kick, but she is the one that really helps keep that line together and works in tandem with the other three backs and has a propensity to put the ball into nice, dangerous spots like that, looking for Evilard on the back end of that cross into the area. Evilard, the senior, who has been so instrumental in the Huskies Resurgence. Wow, what a piece of footwork there by Evilard. Able to get around that one, but two Butler Bulldogs there right on the end line. Nearly was able to draw a corner as well. But you could see the kind of technical skills she possesses and how she can get that ball past those defenders. It's a very quick first step as well. Butler's going to have to be very careful with her. Cannot overcommit when Evilard has it, especially inside the area. And we've talked about this Connecticut program. And for Butler, what Rob Allman and Terry St. John have done with this Bulldogs program, it's been the most successful sustained program, or sustained era, rather, of Butler women's soccer. Winning seasons, getting to the postseason. This is now seventh time out of eight Big East tournaments that they're in at top of the box here in that bullet. Wide right. Yeah, Mazo getting the last touch on that one for the Huskies. And, you know, this Butler team, as we talked to both coaches uh, over the course of this week, talking about, you know, just how they love to play that full flowing type of game, dominating the possession and, you know, really moving the ball well to set up scenarios. But one thing they did stress that their players need to work on is their patience. Got to try to be patient with the ball, find those proper targets. Maybe try to go a little bit earlier, though, in their attacks against this UConn team to try to maybe catch them off guard at times. And they would really love to get their counterattack going well today and really try to challenge them quickly in transition if possible. Sixth consecutive Big East tournament appearance for these Bulldogs. And they've done it in dominant fashion, a 9-1 season. 6-1 and one in the Big East. And when you talk to coaches around this league, they always say it is so difficult to play this Butler team because they are a reflection of the coaching staff, which we talked to Rob and Terry about this week. There's a collectiveness. There's a connection between everybody in this program. Yeah, and you know, they're in that unique situation where they're actually listed as co-head coaches. And in talking with them, they say, well, you, you got to throw our assistant coach, Alex Collier, into the mix as well. We are that collective coaching staff. It's not just about 
either of the head coaches. You know, it, it's really this collective unit. And, you know, they've been able to do some unique things. They've been doing it so long that it feels normal for them, but it's not the traditional style of coaching that you see out there. But, you know, with them, they say there's no egos. There's no true, like, figurehead. And, you know, the fact that they are married, they're able to never have to clock out. You know, you go home. It's not like you forget about work. They're able to have those conversations at any time of the day or night when, hey, you know what, maybe we need to do this with this player or that player. How about this for formational change? So it's a 24-7 kind of collectiveness in running this program and has really paid off well for them, especially over the last six or seven seasons. Nine starters back for this Bulldogs team and you can see just how connected they are. Moving it well right now. Well, obviously all teams across the country and all sports, you know, really challenged with difficulties for a variety of reasons and all the COVID protocols and contact tracing. But the one approach that I love that Butler talked about, and it stemmed from their cross country coach, Matt Rowe, and, and says, you know, with everything going on, it's an opportunity for great teams to be really great and not make any excuses while navigating the challenges. You know, everybody's dealing with difficulties. It's how you navigate through those challenges as a group and get better as a team and as individual players. And, you know, we've seen Butler kind of live that motto and mantra through this season. There is that saying, the Butler way. And you hear that around a lot of schools when it's said, but the coaches and the student athletes live it on their campus. You can see it in a variety of ways. You can see it through this program as that ball is just out of the range from Soderstrom trying to make a connection with Julia Leonard. Yeah, just a little bit too heavy on the touch that time and results in a turnover. But you can see, again, Butler trying to stretch the field, trying to get it wide, trying to get in situations to take on those outside backs of the Huskies. You just think about it. 13 different players in this match have recorded two or more goals on the season. So there is more than enough capability on both sides for us to see well, a scoring affair. Yeah, and what makes it challenging for both teams to defend is that when you have that many players capable of putting the ball in the back of net, you can't just take away that one target. Of course, obviously, Anya Savage is going to be you know marked pretty heavily by UConn, and I'm sure that... You know, players like Mazo and Lynch will be watched carefully as well uh, from Butler's point of view. But, again, with so many players able to, to fill the back of the net, it really could be anyone that steps up and delivers that moment of brilliance here today. What a run by Emile Evillard. Evillard up ahead and Butler defending it. But, nonetheless, the senior just showed us what she's made of, trying to find Jada Conti. I thought it was interesting, Margaret Rodriguez talked about what it's been like to coach Yamile Evillard, and she said you kind of learn about a player throughout their career, and she said what she's loved is growing that relationship, understanding the way that Yamile likes to get coached. It's not, not so much as head-on, direct, but it's just been a built trust that's come with time. Yeah, you know, she said you have to coach her a little differently, you know, but she can be such a dangerous player. And she's explosive, especially when she really puts her mind to it. And here's an opportunity here off the corner for the Huskies. Evilar the chance, and oh, just missed the connection there. Um, what would have been a fantastic strike. Long with a cross. That's sent out of the box. Husky still knocking on the door. Capadona, the freshman. And Butler... Not letting her get much further. She was just outside the box looking to make something happen. Another good ball to Cass Elmore. Elmore, the junior, taken back by the Bulldogs. Now a long ball drilled to shift the field. Palacios over to it. Yeah, you could see, again, Butler trying to take those opportunities for the long counter, try to catch UConn off guard and be more direct with it at times. Obviously, when you have a target like Savage out there, why not try to put her into space behind the defense if possible? The 
Palacios off her line, and here comes a shot. Palacios back in time. That was from distance, and a great decision by Butler just to keep her on watch with how far away she was from the six. Yeah, and Palacios has to be a little bit better with her distributions. That one missed all of her targets in blue shirts and went right to Butler, and you know, fortunately for UConn, she was able to backpedal quick enough. It looked like uh, coming back was Kuzis as well. And, you know, she's all over that back line. And she was looking to get back to help her keep her out as well. But again, Palacios has to uh, be a little bit safer with some of her outlet passes and the build up through the back. Can't be giving away turnovers, especially when she's that far away from the goal. You cannot turn it over against a team that scored 36 <laughs> goals in 10 matches. Incredible numbers for this Bulldogs team leading the Big East in goals, assists, points, just controlling the offensive aspect. Here's a long ball. Palacios way off and stepping in there. Ooh, big collision at the end of that, too. Is coming in with a whole lot of pace was Ali Leonard. It's all for naught as it was offsides on the play, but Palacios uh, playing a little dangerous right now. I mean, obviously she had to the right away to make a play on that, but some good closing pace from Allie Leonard, a member of the Big East All-Freshman team. Is that just the elevated stage of a postseason match? I mean, it could be, you know, you just want to make sure that you're safe, you know, making the safe plays when, when needed and not taking too many chances. Evilard with a bomb that is harmless this time. Again, kind of good back and forth flow here in the early part of this game. Already a third of the way through this first half and both teams creating chances. A little bit more wide open in some ways than the first game we saw here today. What a thriller. Georgetown and Creighton each having their moment in the first half. And then in the second half, Creighton controlled things for a good portion. But into overtime, the Hoyas, if you blink, they'll strike, and that's exactly what they did. Jenna Menta, Big East Offensive Player of the Year, earning a penalty kick. Julia Lease, the sophomore, finishing her first PK opportunity. She converts, and Georgetown, for a fifth straight Big East tournament, is into the championship game looking to avenge their 2019 title match loss to Xavier. And they'll try to do that on Sunday against the winner of this one. By the way, Sunday's final, folks, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Grab a cup of coffee and catch some Big East women's soccer championship match, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday, and it will be on FS1. Uh, and no matter who makes it from this game, it is going to be a tremendous matchup. If it's UConn, they get a rematch of the 2-1 overtime loss against Georgetown, and if it's Butler, you got one of the top offenses in the nation going against one of the top defenses in the country so it should be a spectacular game either way, no matter the result of this game here today. Ooh. Well, Rodriguez <laughs> did a double take there. Well, and that's the thing. As a netminder, you cannot hesitate. You need to make a decision. Be sharp with it. You know UConn's going to be pressing. You know they're going to be pressing high. Got to be quicker with those decisions. Can't have those kind of errors. And this time she's fortunate and does not pay any kind of price for it. But UConn trying to keep Butler locked in here. Great work there by Aaliyah Dean. Kind of stop the attack play of the Huskies there and keep possession for Butler. Stop it, cheering a foul. Yeah, late inadvertent challenge that time from Soderstrom. It's a good time for us, while we do have a stoppage, to get to some of those keys to the match after this opening frenzy. With Connecticut having possession here, let's start with the Huskies. What did Margaret Rodriguez tell you? Yeah, I mean, again, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but, you know, she wanted them to be disciplined with their shape, and especially on, on the defensive side of things. When they turn it over, get back in position, maintain the integrity of what they're trying to do. They want to defend higher up. You know, they want to have that high press. Put Butler under duress in their own area. Put the goalie under some pressure as well. And keep them locked in, just like they're doing right now. Trying to generate some chances. That one, the left foot 
of Capadonna a miss, and finally be good in the box. And that means be good in the box on both ends, whether it's set pieces, whether it's defending, just be good inside the 18, because that's where obviously a majority of the chances are going to come for either side. So if she felt that if they could be better than Butler in those three areas, they would be perhaps on their way to an appearance in the Big East Championship game. They have not played a match in 13 days, but Margaret Rodriguez, who was a great player herself, leading the Huskies to the NCAA National Championship game in 1997 for Coach Len Santiris. You could tell Rodriguez is a former player the moment you start talking with her because she makes no excuses and she said, we've had inter-squad games. She goes, she has to remind her players to make sure they're reminded that they're facing their yeah. teammates. But she goes, look, I've got 32 healthy players. So we're used to going through a gap period between games. There's no excuse for that. Well, and she even set up some of those inter-squad scrimmages on the timeline of when they would have been playing games anyway. So right. they were able to set up, you know, the proper rotation going into that. Then the recovery time afterwards in line with their practice sessions as well. So she felt like they were in a really good spot coming into this one, despite having that layoff between real games. And unlike Georgetown, they did not have to undergo any kind of pause. You know, Georgetown had an eight day layoff where they couldn't train at all. And, you know, that's rough stuff at this point in the season. You don't want to miss one day of practice, let alone eight, where your whole team is sequestered off. Run down the left side for Butler. Morgan Klusterman was ranging her way to it. Now throwing for Justina Gaynor. Two shots for Connecticut, one for Butler. Nothing too dangerous thus far. An early opportunity for Butler in just the opening seconds of this match, but to no avail. And this one will roll. Yeah, that was off a, a well-placed cross that deflected off of a UConn defender and nearly into the back of the net. Great job by the Bulldogs to keep UConn from any sort of transition. Amanda Kowalski to it. Right back to O'Malley, who we'll get to in this broadcast. She's been absolutely sensational. Let's turn to those Butler keys to the match that you have. What are you looking at? Yeah, you know, when we talked to their coaching staff, they felt that their backs, they knew they would be put under a lot of pressure. And what kind of decision-making would they have against the, the pressing forwards, the pressing midfielders of the Huskies? Obviously, you know, that's a big component of this one. They also want to overload the areas on the wide portions of the field. Try to get numbers. Try to create those one-on-one -on -one or 2v1 situations against the UConn backs. And, of course, stopping UConn's counterattack. They know that with UConn's high press, it sometimes generates, you know, quick counterattack opportunities. If they could shut those down in the middle, they should be in good shape. We've already seen Anna Kowalski do a really nice job of just that for Butler today. Evilard now with a great ball forward and the Huskies moving. Jada Conti, the freshman, trying to make a connection with Cass Elmore. Nonetheless, though, there's that UConn transition that is such a key focal point for this Butler squad. Yeah, UConn's got some really great team speed, uh, especially in the perimeter, especially you got players like Evilard out there. They could really get moving with and without the ball. And you saw how quickly they were transitioning from defense to offense there to try to create a scoring opportunity. And now here's where UConn's press comes into play because if they turn it over, they're going to try to win it back in that offensive third and keep the pressure on Butler. Conti that time trying to earn that corner kick, but a nice job by Abigail Isger to knock it out of play for a throw. And this time Isger does even one better, getting the deflection off of Jacqueline Harnett. Well, with that in mind, Abigail Isger, one of the subs that's come on for Butler, they actually rotated four players in. Gretchen Skokland, four goals on the season for her. She's been an interesting 
player for this team. She just came on as well. Yeah, also Alana Wood and Claire Farrington. UConn yet to make a change so far today as we are just about a minute or so past the midway point of this first half. Shots hard to come by for both teams. UConn with two, Butler with one. And Butler with the only shot on goal so far today. Both teams getting a feel for one another. They have never met. And you might think, well, wait, this is the Big East tournament. Didn't they meet in the regular season? This season with COVID-19 impacting things, it's a divisional format in Big East soccer. So the top two in the East division, six teams in the East, top two in the Midwest, qualifying for this four team tournament. And that's why we saw Georgetown, the top seed in the East meet the second seed in the Midwest, Creighton and Butler, number one in the Midwest, meaning second seed. UConn here this evening. Well, and of course, with so much storied history in the Big East with UConn, some people might kind of forget, oh yeah, they weren't in the Big East for the last couple of years. Sure. They were in the American Athletic Conference, this being their return to the Big East, and they're kind of right back where you'd expect them, and that is in the Big East tournament. The folks in stores don't forget. <laughs> they are elated to be competing for Big East championships, and you can sense that vibe. Now here's a dangerous ball, and here come the Huskies in transition. This is Jamile Evillard. Evillard to Conti, the freshman. Jada Conti off the right foot, floats and over the net. Maybe a little bit too ambitious that time for Conti. Right on the edge of the box, wasn't really squared up with the frame of the goal and just trying to let it fly. Evillard putting on the brakes nicely and finding a good little seam to connect with Jada Conti, but again, Conti pulling the trigger and just uh, could not really square up and get a fine strike on that ball. The Huskies getting challenged here, and if they had made any mistake, fun watching Katie Soderstrom track every header. They're just waiting for any moment she can try to pounce. Yeah, they, they really have some dynamic players, and Soderstrom being one of them that, if you're UConn, really need to be aware of where she is at all times. It can be dangerous in a variety of ways. Whistle and a foul on the Bulldogs on the far end. Another tough challenge from behind that time. Alana Wood getting a good chunk of Evillard. And Harnett, one of those wing backs, really gets up and down the field for UConn. Also one of their free kick takers. Another Husky throw. Three shots for UConn, none on goal. Butler with one on target. That's their lone shot of the half thus far. We'll see if the Huskies can find some build up here as off that stoppage, a free kick opportunity. And this is in a great spot here for UConn, almost better than a corner. And this is one of those areas where Coach Rodriguez wanted them to be dangerous in the box. They could be just a little bit better than the Bulldogs here. Could come up with an opportunity to score. To the center of the box, headed and drilled away. Capadonna got her foot to it, just couldn't find a way to do much more with that. Now here's a ball into the direction of Conti, but again, Butler keeping the Huskies from getting a clean touch in the box and it will be a Connecticut corner kick. And good job by the Huskies to win possession back after Butler was trying to clear it away. It was Harnett able to deliver it back into the box. Put it in a pretty good spot which forced Butler to play it out for a corner. Kara Jordan, the sophomore, will take it. With the left foot, a low line drive. That does nothing. Again, Jordan with 
Another nice ball right to the six. But Butler in lockdown mode right now defensively. Jordan with a third try. And a one-half smash into the hands of Rodriguez. Yeah, UConn starting to get a little bit more dangerous now. It took a nice defensive play from Aliyah Dian to knock away one of those initial crosses. But UConn still trying to get frisky down there in the attacking third and generate some more chances. Of course, Butler always a threat to score. Here they get Soderstrom on the run. Soderstrom and the flag is up. It was up for offside. You see how quickly they can get the ball up the field. And they've been flirting with that offsides line all game long. Soderstrom just a hair behind as she jumped right in front of Kuzis. I'll tell you, you see these two teams and their records. You see Butler at 9-1 and one and Connecticut at 8-2-1. two and, one. and you could see why they've had success, Mike, because this feels like a championship match. Yeah, I, I mean, if you would have told me this was a championship match, I would have said, yep, that, that seems about right. These two teams definitely, I think, have put themselves into the talk or spots in the national tournament as well, regardless of what happens here this afternoon. Women's soccer will be 48 teams in the national tournament. We know for sure that the Georgetown Hoyas will be dancing regardless of what happens on Sunday, as this is harmless. And Mazo trying to direct one on frame that time, about 30 yards out or so. Not a lot on it, and obviously not on target, but sometimes you just got to try to keep that goalkeeper honest. A couple of changes in now for Butler as Peyton Black and Gabby Smith enter the lineup. And UConn making its first change of the game as they replace Yamily Evillard. Checked in for UConn. Kara Jordan. Less than 14 to go. This opening half, game two of Big East semifinal Friday. Georgetown taking first semifinal, <laughs> hence the, the story of this weekend. That yes, this feels like more than what would just be categorized as a semifinal game, but the winner of this one's going to have to take down the premier program in Big East women's soccer. That's what Georgetown is. I think Georgetown, after going into overtime today, very happy that it was able to end so quickly. Don't need any extra mileage on those legs heading into Sunday. Pretty quick turnaround. I mean, that's a, an early morning start, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Not a lot of rest and recovery time in between games for any of these teams. Ball sent ahead and through. Soderstrom got a foot to it. Wow, what a defensive play. A huge sequence. The last possible second, Kara Long. Play of the day for the Huskies so far. Watch her tracking all the way back. Saved a goal. What a job by Kara Long, the junior. Stepping in and keeping Butler off the board. Now Butler riding a little bit of momentum. Can they capitalize? Interesting, they're putting five on the goal line. And now begin their runs for the corner. And a great combination to the left side in the box, but the shot was blocked. Now outside the area and drilled away by the Huskies. But still a Butler player in some discomfort. Deep in the 18, I believe it's Gabby Smith who had just checked in. Wood down that right side, now to the left side of the box. And we've got a foul here on the Bulldogs. So Connecticut will have possession. Nonetheless, we just saw the freedom that the Bulldogs can play with offensively and the playmaking that they can have in just mere seconds. Yeah, they were able to create multiple chances there in that last sequence, the last couple of minutes. 
Took a fantastic play from Kara Long to keep this one level. But, you know, Butler starting to find its groove a little bit here in the last couple of moments. But of course, at any time, UConn can get going on those counters. Now a turnover and taken back. Jada Bedoya. Conti. And we're going to have a foul. And the official might be stopping things for a card. Yeah, yeah I was going to say we might see our first booking of the afternoon. It was a clean game in the first semifinal. No cards issued. Perhaps just the stern talking to this time. We'll get another look here as Bedoya able to create some separation. Tried to connect with Conti. And the late that's challenge, and yeah, I mean, that's almost got to be a card. Wow. But instead, just the stern talking to from the official. But it gives UConn an absolutely fabulous chance here. On the kick looks to be Zaccanini. Butler starting with a four-player wall. We'll see what Zaccanini decides to do. Zaccanini with the right foot over the net. Yeah, just got underneath that one a little bit. Lean back, perhaps a touch too much. Seemed like Rodriguez was tracking it well as the keeper clad in that vault yellow color. Here's another look, curling it just over the wall, but that one rising the entire way and never was really destined for the back of the net. Quite a first half. If you just saw the score, there's always those people out there, Mike, who say, oh, scoreless. Like, what's yeah. going on? No, no. This has been back and forth and has felt like a playoff match. These two teams have brought their A game. Yeah, we've seen some great skill plays out there, some great connections through the field, some excellent scoring opportunities. It maybe hasn't resulted in a ton of shots on goal, but the opportunities are being generated. Now these teams just need to tighten things up a little bit and try to create those moments to finish all their hard work. John Fanta, Mike Mancuso, our producer Kevin Brownfin, our wonderful Rush Media crew with you from Providence, Rhode Island, the site of this 2021 Big East Tournament. Coming up at the half, we will look at the Big East Major Award winners. Tons of star power for these two teams. Racking up a plethora of selections. In fact, when we were on the phone yesterday with Rob Almond and Terry St. John, it was, yeah. it was rather <laughs> funny. The awards had been released to the public. Uh, it was well after 1 o'clock. And when you said, how do you feel about <laughs> Stephanie Rodriguez winning goalkeeper of the year? They said, oh, this is the first we're hearing of yeah, it. Yeah, I kind of spilled the beans on that one for them. <laughs> but I had just assumed they had seen the releases. But they were probably buried in film that they were reviewing and, and getting ready for their next training session. But, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of fun. And, you know, they had nothing but, you know, joy for their players that were able to pick up some of those big awards. And especially a player like Stephanie Rodriguez, the co-goalkeeper of the year. You know, they've really been happy with her. Just so unflappable and calm in between the pipes for them. They say she just radiates confidence. And, you know, she's had to wait her turn. She's had to sit behind some good goalkeepers over her career, but has continued to evolve as a player and always really worked hard and just continues to support all her teammates as well. She's very well-liked and well-respected back there as the absolute last line of defense. And it's out of the reach of Kara Jordan, so it's a Butler throw, and the air horn sounds... We've got another set of Bulldog substitutions here. And we got Becky Dean now and Maddie Farnsworth as uh, you know, Coach St. John and Allman not shy about going a little bit deeper onto the bench. They've made a, a good deal of changes already. They are up to, I believe, eight changes on the afternoon. What a luxury that is. Yeah, and what they felt about their depth, you know, they feel like they really don't miss a beat. You know, they could bring in these, these different players and put them in different kind of combinations out there and not lose much of a step at all. And UConn kind of taking a different approach today with just the three changes to this point. Well, 
one thing I think Butler's done a nice job in the first half here is really kind of neutralizing some of these talented midfielders that you guys have. We haven't called a lot of Jessica Mazzo's name. Here's a chance for the Bulldogs. A great run down the left end. And at the edge, this is going to be a Bulldog corner. That was Alana Wood with the run. Yeah, Julia Petrillo with the defense there, helping out Harnett. Harnett so quick, so fast, so difficult to get around. She was starting to close off the angle, but she did need to help defense from Julia Petrillo, but does concede the corner in the process. It'll be the second corner, excuse me, the third corner of the game for the Bulldogs. Abigail Isger. Isger with a high floater, dangerous, a header! It was saved, Palacios coming up huge! Oh, what an opportunity. Peyton Black able to get ahead to it, but the big right mitt of Randy Palacios keeps this one scoreless in Providence. How about the Connecticut Huskies? The last line of defense in this first half, they have saved two would-be goals. Yeah, Butler really starting to put some pressure on them. And again, it's one of those instances you have to defend better in the box. But it was just a really nice job by Peyton Black to get ahead to it. And there you see Palacios actually might have been, you know, it was her right hand that she got down to make the save. But fantastic piece of goalkeeping there to kind of knock it wide where it couldn't just be put in automatically. Oh, we saw Kara Long make one goal-saving play. Now here's a bullet from distance! An absolute wonder strike for Butler! I think it was Gretchen Skoglin from way downtown. Caught Palacios a little bit off her line and makes her pay. What a bomb for the Bulldogs. From what looked like over 30 out. What a finish. Great vision to see that play developing, catching the goalkeeper out of the net. A 40th minute goal for the Bulldogs. And they lead this one 1-0. The fifth goal of the season for Gretchen Skoglund. And that puts her into a tie for second on goals. What a moment. Butler now with four players, Mike with five or more goals, and that's amazing when you consider this is only their 11th match. Yeah, it, it certainly is, and you know, they come in a variety of ways for the Bulldogs. We talked about their flexibility with that 3-4-3 and the different kind of things that they're able to do. And when you have players with high soccer IQ able to read the situation and then execute, it's one thing to notice the keepers out of the net like that, or at least a little bit off her line, but to able to execute like that in a pressure situation is outstanding. And Skoglin, just an absolute huge strike for the Bulldogs. And they might not be done here, John. They sense that UConn is a little bit weakened right now, maybe a little bit rattled. And boy, if they could put another one past Palacios here before the half, they could really set themselves up for that meeting with Georgetown in the final on Sunday. Well, you said it early, Randy Palacios has been playing off her line. And Butler noticing it, just so savvy. Now they go short here on the free kick, but they turn it over. It's a dangerous ball, but right there, O'Malley won't let it happen. Oh, so calm, so good back there, just a freshman. They'll be happy to have three, maybe four more seasons with her as their center back. And we heard the player comparison of Shannon McDevitt for Butler, a uh, Bulldog great, who was just steady Eddie for Rob Alman and Terry St. John, you get compared to someone that strong, they believe that Caitlin O'Malley will be a pro someday. Yeah, and, and you know, and when you have a type of player like that, that you can bring in as a first year player and contribute like that and really cement themselves in one of those key positions like center back, boy, does that make a whole lot of things easier for a coaching staff. I mean, just looking back at Skoglund's goal, how far out do you think that was? In the moment. Yeah, she was, I'd say, a good 30 yards out on that blast. I'm looking, you know, this field line for multi-use and, you know, the lacrosse restraining line. I think it was from right about that spot. We'll get another look at the half, I'm sure. but I'm with you. I'm saying a good 30 yards. And, again, Palacios is still uh, – Almost playing that sweeper keeper type of role where you, you come out at the top of the box and you're waiting to, to play it. But 
I think with this high pressure press from Butler, it's just inviting uh, almost disastrous results. You went to Brown, right? I did. Yeah, I asked you because you have a, a degree <laughs> from an Ivy League school. And, uh, well, I, I didn't major in math at Seton Hall. So I, I wanted to make sure of that with you because I, I was thinking that, but numbers weren't always the strong suit. That was from distance. And, you know, and now that I look at it, it might be more like close to 40 yards out. Well, don't question yourself. No, you, I'm you, just you, looking you. at the matter. I'm like, you know, 30 to 40. Yeah, either way, <laughs> that was just a moment of brilliance for Gretchen Skoglund and uh, something that I'm sure the Butler faithful will be talking about for quite some time, especially if a result can hold for them and gain them that ticket into the final game. Yeah, you talk about magical moments, and that was world class. Yeah, I mean, that's a high degree of difficulty. I mean, people could struggle to shoot on an empty net from that range and, and hit the target. I, I mean, that was, that was truly a moment of brilliance for Skoglund. Sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. And she saw time in all 19 matches as a true freshman and actually got the start against Providence in the Big East semifinals as a freshman. So she's got Big East tournament high level experience. And she said she chose Butler because she just fell in love with the coaches and the other players. Here's another Ooh. long one. <laughs> this one is harmless and sails high. Yeah. What's amazing about that finish though is you can see it folks, and we'll show it here again, the flags. There's a heavy crosswind here today. Look at the flags at the top yeah, of your screen. I mean, a lot of variables go into that shot from Skoglund. Just the ability to, first of all, get it on target, get enough leg behind it, get it through the wind and just over the netminder. Just tremendous. All right, final ticks of this first half. And now UConn building up a little bit. Right side of the box for the Huskies. Can they find an answer? 12 seconds left. And that'll do it for the first half. Yeah, it was nearly there. Isabel Lynch almost able to create an opportunity. If you're Margaret Rodriguez, what do you tell your Huskies? Oh, you got to regroup, put it behind you. Still got plenty of time left in this one. Don't get too down on yourselves. Yes, it was a fantastic strike, but they have been able to create their own chances as well. Now it's just a matter of can they finish one or two of those chances. Butler won UConn nil at the half. 45 down, 45 to go to decide who meets Georgetown for the Big East title on Sunday. We've got much more to come here on the Big East Digital Network. Sponsored by SoFi. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. As Bulldogs, we believe in the Butler way, in doing more than our best, in putting team above self, and unleashing our strengths for the greater good. We're selfless. We're united. We're unwavering. Now more than ever. Welcome back to the Big East Women's Soccer Championship presented by Jeep. We're at the half in our second semifinal. Butler up 1-0 on Connecticut. Earlier today in our first game, we looked at the Big East award winners and all-conference teams. Take a look. Look at the Big East Women's Soccer Honors. First, the all-conference first team loaded up with Hoyas. Huskies and Bulldogs. Yeah, kind of as expected, a lot of those players will be featured here this evening and on Sunday. And, you know, you look up and down the, 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 those names right there, a lot of them playing today. Cleverly has been outstanding as a transfer from Cal Berkeley. Livingstone, really the centerpiece of that back line for Georgetown. Menta, well, we know what she's been able to do when she's teamed up with her teammate Vicari. And, of course, some uh, impressive players coming up in the second game as well. 
It will be fun to see some of those players in action as we take a look at the second team now. And these are some of the players who are the glue of their respective teams. Just think about what Julia Lees does for Georgetown and what Jenna Royson does as well. Yeah, absolutely. And of course for Creighton, you see Atkinson and Heinrich there on the second team. They've been fantastic in this game as they have been all season long. And uh, some more coming up later on today. How about Meg Hughes as well for Providence, part of a loaded freshman team. You just think about the future of this conference, Mike. And how about Caitlin O'Malley for Butler? She plays the most minutes for the Bulldogs, and she's their center back. Yeah, I think in talking to their coaches, they said she only came off for like six minutes the entire season, and that's doing it as a freshman who's really been able to take command of that back line for the Butler Bulldogs. As we turn to the major award winners, and these all belong on the hilltop for the most part, Jenna Menta, the Offensive Player of the Year, just coming up with an assist in our first half. Yeah, and that's what she's been able to do. Had a team-high seven assists coming into today, added her eighth on the goal for Vicari, and uh, she's just been a, a tremendous force to be reckoned with on the attacking side of the ball. In the midfield, it's Daisy Cleverly. How about this stat for Georgetown? This is the eighth time since 2010 the Hoyas have had the Big East Midfielder of the Year. Yeah, like I said earlier, you know, she's a transfer from Cal Berkeley. She's from New Zealand. They had some connections there in bringing her in. Big question Dave Nolan had was, would she fit in? Well, I think it has been a resounding yes. Absolutely, and defensively it could have been a number of different candidates, but Kellyanne Livingstone, the senior wall for the Georgetown Hoyas coming up with the top defensive honor. Yeah, we've talked about just how competitive she is. Would rather win one nothing than than ten to one, and you know has been extremely motivated this season. Just such a good organizer of that back line. And in the coaching staff front, Ross Polly from the basement of the preseason poll in the Midwest Division in the Big East to the Big East tournament, and now. 45 minutes in against Georgetown and even up at one. Yeah, and of course, you can't forget they started the season at 0-4, went yeah. on a tear, and really earned that spot here in the Big East tournament for the first time in program history. You became very familiar with the Big East freshman of the year, Meg Hughes. What does she do so well? Oh, just a tremendous goal scorer, very clinical in the final third of the field. Has great speed and spatial awareness on the field. Was really able to do a nice job getting in behind defenses and making them pay all year long. The future is bright for Sam Lopes Friars. We'll be seeing them in this tournament soon enough as we take the co goalkeepers of the year. This was so tight it came down to two award winners, Stephanie Rodriguez for Butler. Yeah, the vote split between uh, the coaches this year and Stephanie Rodriguez who will play a prominent role in uh, the next game here this afternoon. One of those award recipients and someone that obviously her coaching staff very high on her calmness and her presence in the box and how she's able to command that area of the field. On the flip side for the UConn Huskies, Randy Palacios, Palacios with four clean sheets joining Rodriguez. Yeah, Palacios, another one of those players that her coaches just absolutely love and you know had a tough moment earlier this year, gave up what some might consider a soft goal against Georgetown. They wound up losing that game in overtime two to one, but then came back strong later on against Providence, came up and saved the penalty kick, which ultimately earned them their spot in the Big East tournament. As Bulldogs, we believe in the Butler way, in doing more than our best, in putting team above self, and unleashing our strengths for the greater good. We're selfless. We're united. We're unwavering. Now more than ever. Money is working toward the same goals. Why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. 
Expand with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go towards your goals. Like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Though we are many, we are part of something. A force bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. As Bulldogs, we believe in the Butler way, in doing more than our best, in putting team above self, and unleashing our strengths for the greater good. We're selfless. We're united. We're unwavering. Now more than ever. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go towards your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. We are at the half between Butler and Connecticut. The Bulldogs up 1-0 on an amazing wonder strike that came in in the 40th minute off the foot of Gretchen Skokland, her fifth goal of the season, and that is the difference. John Fanta, Mike Mancuso with you. In match number one of the day, we saw a thriller between Georgetown and Creighton. Yeah, they were able to get on the board early where the Hoy is as Jenna Menta played it across and they were to smash it home was Gia Vicari, the league's leading scorer, a pure strike, great finish. That put, a, put Georgetown up 1-0, nine minutes in. They would nearly get a second one off a header from Liss, but that one just wide of the net. On the counter, Creighton would create some dangerous opportunities. Kardovich was able to find her teammate, Nicole Tiller, on the far end of the box, so Tiller unable to convert there, but there, a moment of brilliance. Ricardovich able to find Heinrich, cross into the area. A little bit of a touch here from Fothergill, and Kardovich able to get the equalizer. That one in the 27th minute. Here's another look, a little bit of confusion in the box, and the finish from Kardovich. Creighton extending this one into overtime, and it didn't last long, just 35 seconds. Jenna Menta able to get into the area and draw the foul against the keeper as you saw those legs come out from Keelan Terrell. And then, calm under the pressure, Lease with the finish, sending Georgetown into the championship game. For a fifth straight Big East tournament, the Hoyas marching to that title match. Who will they meet? That's still to be decided, but thus far, 9-1 Butler, as advertised, up 1-0 on Connecticut at the break. More to come as you're watching the Big East Digital Network, sponsored by SoFi. Though we are many, we are part of something. 
a force bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. As Bulldogs, we believe in the Butler way, in doing more than our best, in putting team above self and unleashing our strengths for the greater good. We're selfless. We're united. We're unwavering. Now more than ever. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Just moments away from the final 45 between Butler and Connecticut in the Big East Women's Soccer Semifinals. Let's look at the highlights from the first 45. Yeah, it was a pretty good half of play for both teams. Pretty well matched. Butler creating chances early as they were able to get Soderstrom into the box, but a fantastic save by Kara Long to keep it level at zero apiece. UConn would go on the offensive as well, sending Conti towards the top of the box where she was fouled, but UConn unable to capitalize on the free kick as it was put over the net by Emma Zaccanini. There's another look there as the high riser up and around the wall. Then Butler would force one a little bit deeper in this time. The long wonder strike, as John called it, from range. Here's another look. Oh, just a fantastic finish. Gretchen Skoglin makes it 1-0 on an absolute bomb from almost 40 yards out. So as I said, pretty even for the most part. Total shots 6 to 5, but the shots on goal, the one kind of glaring weakness I think for Yukon John where Butler able to generate 4 on goal. Yukon still unable to find the target so far here this afternoon. Fouls Butler a little bit more aggressive on the defensive end and the corners nearly even as well. Butler trying to test that back line of the Huskies getting called for two offsides and both of them were fairly close. Connecticut at 8-2-1 on the season. They have gone through their different moments of adversity. And you think about this program, Margaret Rodriguez in her third season as the head coach, 14th with the program on the coaching side, she has talked about what it's taken to get back to this point, to have this type of season be back in conference tournament play because her first two seasons as head coach didn't go necessarily as planned, but she said we had to get back out into the recruiting trail, find the right kids that, that just say UConn soccer, which she knows that all too well. And she said in a way, even though there was a leadership change, she wanted to put her spin on UConn soccer, and she gives Coach Santeris, a legend, a lot of credit for that, but there's also that way that she wants her teams to compete. We're about to find out a lot about just how far UConn women's soccer has come in this second half. Yeah, and you know, one of the last things she told us about her team was that this year they've been playing every match like it's our last this season, and well, this is exactly that. Potentially could be their last game of the year if they cannot pull out a couple of moments of brilliance here to tie and then go ahead. But Butler, I tell you what, they have come to play. A lot of question about, you know, how would they match up against this UConn team? And will their offense, which has been so high flying all season long, be able to get it done against one of the top defenses in the nation? And uh, so far that question has been answered with a yes on the absolute blast from Gretchen Skoglund.
the other question that was in the minds of Butler's coaching staff was, can we handle UConn's transition? And thus far, it's been handled well. Now here's a ball for Evilard, looking towards the back post. This one had too much on it. Yeah, that might be some of that extra adrenaline when you start a half, and Evilard getting a complete hold of that one, but unfortunately overshooting everyone through the penalty area. And it's been a nasty day here in Providence. Rain, snow, sleet. We've kind of seen it all. And one thing throughout has been this prevailing wind that has been pretty gusty at times, John. I walked outside a couple of times near field level, and you could certainly feel it. You could see the flags whipping around in the background uh, throughout Anderson Stadium. Oh, here's a great run for the Bulldogs. Soderstrom with a chance. Katie Soderstrom off the left foot in this one. And that's one of those instances where she might wish she had that one back. Soderstrom on the run against the UConn defense. Coming over was Harnett, trying to slow her down just enough, but the cutback, and then trying to open up for that shot. Fantastic bid there for Soderstrom, the first teamer. Five goals, five assists. Had a hat trick this season. Always dangerous. I just couldn't quite get that one on net. Soderstrom with a ton of activity level in this match. And obviously the coaching staff very high on her play over the course of the season and what she's been able to do. Great one-two combo with Savage. So now on the kick, here's Anna Kowalski. Amanda Kowalski to the Ooh, center boy. of the area. Now outside the box, and now Connecticut will look to get out in transition. This is their strength. Cappadona up ahead. This is Jada Conti. The true freshman and Jada Conti. Let's see what the official rules yeah. here. Yeah, looked like a goal kick from yep. here. She just wasn't able to turn the corner. UConn thinking they got the deflection. But again, that was a good opportunity for the Huskies in transition back the other way. And able to get behind the defense. But Conti just unable to quite turn that corner on the Butler right back. Now it'll be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Kessel Moore, the last touch on that one for the Huskies. Well, you just saw just how great of a runner Katie Soderstrom is. And that was the description that Rob Allman used earlier this season when I talked to him. He said she just loves going at people. A 1v1 player who loves attacking space behind defenders. And he said what's amazing is she combines an aggression at going after people with this calm and composed nature when she does have the opportunity to finish as she sends a ball ahead now. Off her line, Palacios, and now the Bulldogs have a chance to make it two, but Palacios doing just enough. It's still in the area and a left-footed strike that's deflected away by Savage. Oh, the UConn defense put under duress, looking a little bit discombobulated back there. Palacios getting caught well out of the net. Was lucky that the deflection didn't get into a better spot for Savage. And, you know, credit Palacios, though, after turning it over there, able to have the presence of mind to stay with Savage and block that shot from range. And Butler now really threatening again here early in the second half. A second goal would really be difficult for UConn to come back from. Amanda Kowalski to the six. Center of the box. Savage got to it momentarily, and off the scramble, it's laid back out. Now service that's headed away. And the high press of Butler effective here today. UConn struggling to get out of its own end. 
Mazzo coming over for the deflection. Well, six minutes into this second half and it hasn't lacked the moments for either side. We've just seen an open field game. Savage, cut off, still in the box, and now laced away again. Huskies just playing a little bit of survival right now with a Butler frenzy of movement in the attacking third. Yeah, UConn just unable to connect any kind of passes from the back. They basically are getting one touch. It's going right to a Bulldog as they are winning those 50-50 battles in the midfield. Leave it to Evilar to get them reconnected. That's what the seniors done all season for this team. Kess Elmore. Elmore trying to find an opening and just never found it. Yeah, really good one-on-one -on -one defending there from Taylor Crow. Stayed step for step. Didn't fall for any of Kess Elmore's trickery and in the end, Elmore just kind of running out of real estate there on the end line. You can see the wind even affecting the placement of the ball. The ball being moved by the wind as they're trying to set it up for the goal kick. Bit blustery down there and they're gonna opt to go short anyway. Now ball ahead and the Bulldogs on the attack again. Great run through space. Just a little bit better defense that time. Julia Petrillo stepped in and did enough. Yeah, Allie Leonard just so crafty. Coaching staff referring to her as their little magician. Yes. Not very scary or physically imposing, but when she has the ball, they say look out. And you can see right there she was able to slip past the defender and create some space on the touchline in tight quarters. This will be another... Bulldog corner. And this field still slightly turning in favor of the Bulldogs here. You could feel the momentum building for them. You feel like another goal is coming on for this Butler team. They have been the more aggressive team, especially in the attacking third uh, throughout this game, and especially in this half. They seem to be playing with almost a little bit more urgency than UConn as they try to find that insurance goal. Amanda Kowalski, three assists on her season. She's been serving it up for Butler. Does it here once again. Goes near post. Palacio's got a piece of it. It's still out in the open. A flurry of players getting after it. And for now, nothing. But my goodness. Well, and good luck if you're the statistician on that play. How many shots were blocked by the defense or even Palacios there in that sequence. It was a beautifully struck ball into the area actually went off the back of Savage. I think it might have hit Palacios. And then how many players had a crack at it? UConn struggling to get it out. And then the final shot coming from Aliyah Dian. Too high, but again, Butler pressing here in search of that second goal. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, if you're the statistician, just, just give up. Just head over to LaSalle Bakery. Put a handful of shots there and call it a day. <laughs> right now, they, they've credited Butler with 10 shots. Four of them on goal, and of course, one of them in the back of the net. Off the right foot of Gretchen Skoglin. That one back in the 40th minute. What a moment for Skoglin, what a moment on this day. Championship game berth on the line, winner gets the powerhouse Georgetown Hoyas. Such a dynamic group of players, Jenna Menta charging them. Well, and on a day where Georgetown did not have its finest game, they were still able to find a way to persevere and pull out the W and earn another bid to that championship game. And I'm sure it'll be a little bit of a wake-up call for them. But again, give a lot of credit to Creighton. Boy, did they come in and they were not intimidated. 
Fell down early in the ninth minute. Responded about 20 minutes later with a goal of their own and held their own for the rest of regulation. And then an unfortunate takedown in the box to generate the penalty kick what was the difference. But uh, that, that was a heck of a game. We saw the sophomore class for the Hoyas make timely plays. Gia Vicari, Julia Lease, sensational talents for the Hoyas and the way that their second year players have been able to take that next step. That, that's the theme here with Georgetown. It's the theme with Butler. It's why Butler's making a six consecutive Big East tournament appearance. And for UConn, the Huskies are synonymous with this event. This is a Big East best 20th conference tournament appearance for UConn and this comes after a seven year absence. Yeah I mean you look almost up and down the rosters of most of the teams in the Big East and it is an influx of youthful players that have energized these teams and it's going to produce some amazing soccer over the next couple of seasons as well and this one uh, is going to come down to something special I feel like between this game and then of course the final on Sunday where some of those young players will be on full display once again. How special is Soderstrom? I don't know how she just managed through two, even three defenders and somehow kept the ball. UConn just scatters it back to the other end. But nonetheless, so impressed just getting a chance to see her in person, the maneuverability. Yeah, you, you talk about one heck of a one-two punch when you have Soderstrom and Savage both up top for you. I mean, you could see why this team has scored so many goals this season because even if you try to key on one or even both of them, they have players that will come up through the midfield that can kill you as well. So, you know, what they've been able to put together uh, for Coach St. John and Allman has been really tremendous. And you could just see their whole philosophy coming to fruition in the players that they've been able to recruit to Butler and, and get them all thinking the same way about what they want to do and how they want to accomplish it on the field. Alana Wood comes back on for the Bulldogs for Justina Gaynor. Nice little through ball. Perhaps an opportunity for Leonard. Soderstrom with a run, and that one. Harnett just able to get in the way. She's so good in that right back position. A real disruptor. Well, great job by Kess Elmore to track that down, earn the foul, give it back to Connecticut. It's been an active first 14 minutes of this second half. It, it even feels like more with just the level of activity. But for UConn here, Mike, you look at that scoreboard, we know that the Huskies have had the goal scorers to find that response. Right, and I think you really got to credit what Butler's been able to do in the midfield here today and really disrupt UConn's flow in connecting. And see, there's another example. They're just going to blast it from the back line trying to target up front. This time they do connect. But traditionally, they like to work it through Mazo and Capadonna, you know, those type of players in the middle in their buildup. But now they've had to kind of bypass that whole middle third of the field just because of how good Butler is playing in those areas and making life difficult for those players. You know, and at the end of the day, UConn still does not have a shot on goal. And, you know, you're not going to win any games like that. So they got to find a way to get the ball up and get into some dangerous areas for their attacking players to generate those scoring chances. This one flared out for a Husky throw-in. Uh, now the official clarifying it will go to Butler. Now the Huskies with some activity, but Butler defending it just perfectly as they have throughout the day. And now a bullet down the other end. Savage trying to run it down. Palacios says she's pinned all day off her line, and this time coming out of the 18 to get that back to the other end. Yeah, I think for Butler, if they could just get that ball a little bit wider, that'll kind of take Palacios almost out of the equation there, and Savage would have had an excellent opportunity Put something on frame as Butler starting to pile up a couple more fouls. 
Been whistled about eh, two to one margin so far today. Taylor Crow whistled that time. And for Connecticut, we haven't had many opportunities for the Huskies to have a set piece, to have a combination. And still looking for that big shot on target on Rodriguez. This one served up and just out of the reach of Evillard. Yeah, Kuzi's putting that one in. And again, difficult today with the blustery conditions. As Butler making a change, they'll bring in Abigail Isger back into the match. And Butler very liberal with its substitutions in the first half. Making eight changes in the first 45 minutes. But again, we've spoken about the quality of their depth and their ability to not really lose a beat when making some of these changes. Makes it all the more difficult on UConn. UConn has made four changes so far tonight. Butler out shooting UConn 10 to five, four shots on target for the Bulldogs, and here's the difference. None, no shots on goal for Connecticut. For a Connecticut team that has had nine different goal scorers, 20 goals in 11 matches, ranking fourth in the Big East, and their offense has been shut down. We often talk about Butler this year and their attack and how much they can score, but Rob Allman, Terry St. John making it known we are what we are because of our defense. Evan Lard from downtown, and that was <laughs> dangerous, but just off target. Yeah, that was almost the exact same spot where Gretchen Skoglin scored in the first half. Taking a page out of the Butler book that time. Evillard not missing by much. And there you see right at that black line. You're right. And just missing the upper 90. And, you know, Stephanie Rodriguez, as good as she is, you know, she's only 5'6", which isn't that tall for a keeper. And that one nearly snuck over her and into the net. But again, UConn still without a shot on goal. And, you know, this is a UConn team that generates almost 16 shots per game. Right now they're at 6, so... Again, I think it really stems from the midfield play of the Bulldogs. There's Mazzo trying to chip one forward, but she's had a hard time trying to get going in this game, and she's such a key component of what they like to do in building up their offensive chances. How do you get her going? Oh, you just got to find a way to make smarter decisions in the middle, and that's everyone across the board. You know, a lot of times it seems like UConn's just maybe a little bit rushed here and there, but... The other big factor is just how good a job Butler's doing. I mean, they are just there. They are swarming. As soon as they lose possession, they are finding a person, getting to them, tracking the ball well. It, you know, there's not so much I don't think Mazo could do individually, but just as a team, they just need to ratchet it up a notch or two because right now I feel like all the fire and energy is, is really coming from Butler uh, for most of this half in particular. Great combination by the Bulldogs here, and a ball ahead to Soderstrom. Soderstrom doubled up by the Huskies. Lace back towards the midfield, and now UConn looking for a transition. Evilar trying to manage to it. Well defended by Crow, and now down the left side for the Huskies. Capadonna. And it will go back to the Bulldogs. Yeah, just running out of room there. It's another changeup coming for Butler. They're going to bring in the goal scorer, Gretchen Skoglin. It's going to give Anya Savage a bit of a rest here with about 25 minutes left. I'm sure we'll see her with maybe 10 to 12 minutes remaining in this half, but obviously productive minutes out of Skoglin in the first frame. Earlier this season, was talking to Rob Alman about his program, and I said, how do you handle this season with everything that's taken place with COVID-19 and things getting pushed to the spring? You've got pauses and randomness. You talked about the no excuses that Margaret Rodriguez is using with the Huskies, and Coach Allman said the biggest thing, no matter what the challenge is, no matter what style we're playing against, do we stay 100% true to who we are and what we do? And he said, just staying so locked into the principles, staying true to who we are as we play. He said, it, it sounds cliche, but it's the way that we've had success. 
and he said the teams that stay true to who they are in a season like this one will definitely have the most success. Yeah, and I think we've seen that on display. Is again, another change coming in now. Peyton Black returns. And, you know, and, and then the two of them speaking about this team, again, they go on about just as they're heading into this postseason, how they just they just love this group, you know, the, the mentality, the consistency of playing and competing hard. But the most important thing they felt was playing hard, but with that emotional uh -oh. control. Here we go for the Huskies, an opportunity. Conti feeds it off. Right side in the box, Rodriguez off her line, and it's smashed to the right side. Cass Elmore was trying to find that moment of brilliance. And easily the most dangerous moment of the game for UConn. Conti in transition, showing what she can do. Laid off a nice ball, was maybe a little bit too much on that touch for Elmore, and she just could not get squared up on the net. Maybe saw out of the corner of her eye the bright yellow of the netminder Rodriguez coming out at her. And just trying to swing it on to the net. A brilliant opportunity for the Huskies who have now found a little bit of life here. That they have. Evilard left side. Evilard looking for an opening. All day Butler's been in the right spots. And Kowalski with the deflection there over the end line. So a corner kick now for UConn who's starting to tilt that momentum back in their favor now. An excellent opportunity. They'll send... Emma Zaccanini over to the far side to take this corner. Third corner of this fixture for the Huskies. And it comes at the halfway point of this second half. Zaccanini, can she find that response? So the start of it, and it's over the top of the net. It'll be a goal kick for Rodriguez. Yeah, just a little bit too much curl on that one. The in swinger kick from that far side. Butler will make another change, bringing Claire Farrington back in, the freshman from Australia. And again, this rotation of fresh legs, trying to keep UConn off balance, but the conditioning of the Huskies shining through. The iron women out there for Coach Rodriguez still only like that. four changes on the day. Margaret Rodriguez, one of just four Huskies in the history of UConn women's soccer in the 40-40 club. Ooh. 40 goals, 40 assists. That was nearly a moment for Butler to strike. Skoglin nearly getting to it. Now Gretchen Skoglin had that moment in the 40th minute. Her fifth goal of the season now on the left end. That was a well-placed ball for Wood. Alana Wood just didn't really... Well, she got what she wanted, though. Yeah, got the deflection for the corner. Good patience. And again, there's that Butler patience we were talking about. Not rushing things on the offensive end, waiting for the defender to set up, setting the defender up, and then getting that corner kick. How many times do you see a player come up with absolutely nothing to show oh. for that? That's the norm. Exactly. And again, that, that is what the Butler coaching staff talks about is being Butler soccer, playing with that emotional control. Well, that's what they've been. Amanda Kowalski taking the sixth Bulldog corner. Kowalski goes to the center of the box. It's headed away by Evilard. A well flicked on header there by Evilard to get it out of harm's way. But again, the Bulldogs, a chance to keep UConn pinned down. And they'll make, they'll get everybody back for their formational change and get back into shape. A long run there for Kowalski to Go from the corner to take this throw is perhaps a tad bit of gamesmanship as well with the clock winding down and nursing that 1-0 lead. It feels like, and the 20 minutes left in regulation clearly indicated as the Huskies bring Kara Jordan back. It feels like Mike Mancuso, there are some unwritten chapters to this one. Yeah, and you know, it, you feel like it's one of those games where a team like Butler, they've been pressing, 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 creating some very dangerous scoring opportunities, but UConn, since the goal, bending, not breaking, and now UConn starting to threaten a little bit too. Do they have enough in them there for that equalizing goal? Time will tell over the next 19 minutes and change. 
There's high drama, obviously, in the first semifinal between Georgetown and Creighton. Will we have some more of that extra time drama here this evening with these two? Arnett ranging over to it, and now for the Bulldogs to throw. You know, they'll make another change again. Very cheeky with some of these changes, you know, kind of oh, yeah. playing that game of milking the clock as well as you can instead of making, you know, four or five changes at once, just kind of letting them out there one at a time. This time it's Gabby Smith returning to action. This is a deep squad. And when you're in control, 1-0, getting everybody in the equation involved. That's how Butler's gotten here. Now a great combination for the Huskies. Will this stay in? It does. A left foot strike, center of the box, Conti. Oh. They wanted a handball, didn't get it. Conti again, and that was blocked. No, I think they had a, a pretty good case. It looked like it came up on the arm of Alana Wood. UConn asked for it. But the officials play through. Bang, bang situation there, as one might expect. It wasn't quite an unnatural position as well with the arm. But you sense UConn noticing they have that speed advantage now. Their left forward against the right back. Smith with that big knee brace was clearly beaten with speed by Kara Jordan. Will they try to find her again? Oh, tough challenge from behind. And they play right through. That was a very tough challenge. And it came on that right side. That was from Farrington, who just came on the field for Butler, coming up with that challenge, Mike. Let's take another look at this situation. So we're gonna look at that entry into the box. The UConn looking for a handball. Conti doing well and yeah, it does kind of pop up off her thigh into her arm. Hmm. Could have been a case made for sure. But UConn definitely has... Oh, that's a good ball from Conti. Has started to find ways to get Conti in space and give her some opportunities to be a little bit more dangerous up front. Now right-footed strike just left. Yeah, Mazza so doesn't need a lot of space to get that shot off. Now you just saw what can happen if Jessica Mazzo can get going. And when we talk about this player, the sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, you are talking about the 2018 High School Girls National Player of the Year, just the fifth Connecticut player to take home that honor. A fantastic talent. And we asked Margaret Rodriguez what separates her, and it wasn't the talent or skill, it was the heart. She said she'll run through a brick wall for anybody on this team. Yeah, I talked about her grit, her worth ethic, you know, and, and the huge learning curve that she's been on since her freshman season. You know, had to make some big adjustments to the college game, but the fact that she's so coachable makes her such a good player. You know, she gave up the ball a lot as a freshman, but now has an understanding how to be a more effective playmaker. They don't need to rely on her as a goal scorer. In high school, you know, she was known for all this scoring stuff, but as a center mid for UConn, they want her more as a distributor and, and keeping possession and then being smart defensively, getting back. And she's done all that in spades this year. And, you know, it was proven, obviously, she's first team all Big East this year uh, as just a sophomore. But now again, Butler threatening with yet another corner kick. And this will be their sixth of the match. A free kick uh, here. Or free kick, excuse me. For Abigail Isger. Basically a short corner. It is. <laughs> Isger, dangerous spot. Palacios got a hand to it, and there it is for Butler. A dagger of sorts for the Bulldogs with 14 and a half left off that scramble. We'll see who it was. And that could be... 
the final nail in the Yukon coffin here today. We will wait to see who exactly it was it looks like. Let's take a look. Alana Wood. Alana Wood becoming the 15th different Butler <laughs> player to score a goal this season. Yeah, Wood with a final touch for glory there. And you can see the dejection on the faces of the Huskies. Backs up against the wall. And they are still, John, without a shot on goal in this one, which just tells you how well Butler's been able to execute their game plan here today. Now another turnover, and Butler looking for more. Right-footed strike over the head of Palacios, and off the crossbar. Well, they had her beat again from range, and that one not missing by much. Mere inches away from making this one 3-0. Wow. Wow. This has been a textbook performance by these Butler Bulldogs. And you can just see why they average almost three, over three and a half goals per game. Second highest scoring offense in the country on display, again, against one of the best defensive teams in the country. And they have found creative and different ways to score here this afternoon. And UConn needing to dig deep here and come up with some Attacking plays down the stretch. And Butler on the attack again. This time holding was Becky Dean. And that's okay to dump it down deep. That corner, they make Palacios make a play on it. Cathedona up the left side. And the Huskies find some sort of response. This one across the end line for a Rodriguez goal kick. Now UConn making a change. They will bring back in Jada Bedoya. Back on now for Butler come Julia Leonard and Morgan Klusterman. Checking out for the Bulldogs. Going to be Peyton Black. And also Maddie Farnsworth. Bedoya coming back on for the Huskies. Just have not been able to find that moment with Mazo or Evie Lard. They've had Conti make runs at it, but that moment where there's been clear space, and I'll tell you, Mike, you have got to give a ton of credit to just the freshman, Caitlin O'Malley, at that center back position. But this is a Butler team that just plays with three in the back. And when you talk to coaches across this league, Margaret Rodriguez even said it, she was amazed at how free Butler played offensively but I think it says that much about the fact they could play that free knowing what kind of players they have in the back. Yeah, when you have the confidence in your back line, you know you could take maybe a couple more chances, which could lead to more chances for brilliance on the attacking end. But they've just been so solid defensively as well as they've been good offensively. I mean, yes, we talk about how many goals they've scored. 36. Wow, it's amazing. They've only given up six on the season. Oh, what a shot! And a goal! Koozies from way outside, and UConn not dead yet. How about the Huskies? Margaret Rodriguez has said that Melina Koozies is a big time difference maker. She's got UConn back in it. And maybe just slightly misread that time by Stephanie Rodriguez, but a brilliant free kick strike. Kuzi's first goal of the season comes in the 79th minute of play. So just three minutes after the goal from Wood, and all of a sudden this game takes on a completely different tone. And the energy change that has happened from the UConn sideline is noticeable right now. They are loud. They are into it. And the Huskies find themselves with an opportunity here. Bodies flying all over the field here. And now 
If you're UConn, you just got to be a little bit careful. I know they're going to be trying to bring up numbers, try to create those attacking plays up front. Well, could put them prone to be countered by Butler, and we know how many players are able to finish with authority for the Bulldogs. They'll bring back in Savage, and just like we thought, right around that 10-minute mark. So now Savage, first team all Big East, nine goals on the season. Back out there to cause some problems for the UConn back line. 10 minutes left in regulation. Butler scoring the first two in total control for much of this game. But Connecticut, the strike from distance from Molina Kuzis. And some life here. An opportunity still to get it back. Cappadona to Conti. Jada Conti. And now you start to see this combination Mazo, Capadonna, Conti as well, working it across the field, side to side, through the midfield. That's the piece that's been missing for large portions of this game today for UConn. Again, Butler playing the slow sub game. As they're going to bring in Justina Gaynor. Well, the official aware, he's trying to get them to speed it up and yeah. wouldn't be surprised down the stretch to see him start stopping the clock as well on some of these dead ball situations. Conti trying to get to it. She's been relentless today and a foul. And a free kick for the Huskies with 8.40 left. UConn setting things up quickly. Molina Kuzi's fresh. Off the goal just moments ago with another opportunity here. The Huskies looking for some big East magic. This is a perfectly placed ball now just outside the box. Harnett banged away by Soderstrom. Yeah, good closeout by Soderstrom. They didn't want to give Harnett a free cross into the box. Another service Ooh. headed right into the arms of Rodriguez off of the head of Conti. Conti, though, with her back to the goal, able to flick it on over the defender and keep it on frame. Heads up save that time by Randy Palacios, or excuse me, by Rodriguez. The winner of this one. Meets the Georgetown Hoyas on Sunday for the Big East title. Georgetown looking for a fourth crown in five tournaments. They've been the standard setter in this conference. What Dave Nolan's built, truly special. These two teams both believe they can be a fitting challenger. Butler trying to get themselves a rematch of the 2018 championship match. A 1-0 affair with the Hoyas coming out on top in D.C. But Connecticut in their return to the Big East looking to show that they are back and ready for this stage and trying to get a rematch they greatly would love with Georgetown to do it. And they've got a lot of work to do here with six and a half left. Down a goal, and in hopes of some real magic. Evillard back out there now for the Huskies. Alana Wood rejoins the fun for Butler. Lena Cousy scoring her first goal of the season, and in that central midfield role now for this Huskies team, don't let it mistake you because she had an amazing high school career in which she scored 60 goals and had 33 assists, but they've had to move her around because that's where they need her most, and that's where Margaret Rodriguez believes she fits best. Yeah, just a, a tremendous player. You can tell, obviously, you know, plays through whatever she can, has that big old wrap on her arm. Now another change for Butler. Allie Leonard back in. 
Time just ticking away though on the Huskies. They are under six minutes left in this second half. Wood. And Savage does well there to knock it off of Harnett. So a throw in here for Alana Wood. And nobody there, so here comes Palacios, here comes the Huskies, less than five to go. What's your approach here? The known is they got to score, but any thoughts? Yeah, I think they got to continue to work it through Mazo. let them kind of distribute, try to get Conti or Evilard running wide and get behind the defense. So on the goal kick, UConn making another change, though. They're going to get Kesselmore back in. So again, another target up front for them to hit. But if they could find a way to get some good distribution through the midfield, and not just try to bomb it from the back line. Could create some more dangerous type of chances. Then obviously just be wary of the Butler counter. This one flared. And see, that's what I'm talking about there. The long bomb from the defense. It's going to give Rodriguez a chance to take a couple more seconds off the clock. Need to connect and keep that possession. Because every time you give it away, Butler's probably going to be able to take off 20 to 30 seconds. And you just don't have the luxury of any kind of time here with under four to go. Butler. Broke out. To the lead in the 40th minute. An amazing strike and finish for Gretchen Skogland, her fifth goal of the year and it came from nearly 40 yards out and in this second half it's been controlled by the Bulldogs they made it to Alana Wood but now UConn answering back with a terrific goal from distance from Melina Kuzis and an opportunity here still three and change to go the Huskies with another throw and Signals coming in from the UConn sideline to start to get everybody ahead because time is of the essence. Anya Savic really heads up play there to knock it off the UConn player and get another throw. Keep those precious seconds ticking off the clock. The miscommunication there. The official looking for the signal. Now they're going to stop the clock to try to figure out if this is going to be a goal kick or a corner. They're going to say a throw in. And the corner flag, the wind has blown it down. So a little bit hard to tell when it gets that close to that corner of the field. And really almost everyone up for UConn outside of Julia Petrillo. And that just to stall things further. Petrillo up ahead, Avilar trying to run it down. It's not in her range. Less than two to go here from Chappie. Now this is interesting. They're stopping the clock immediately. Okay, and that's to make the change. I was like, why are they stopping it immediately there? But Butler making one more change, and uh, Gretchen Skoglin back out. It's Palacios well outside her box. Skoglin, I'm sure, <laughs> perhaps trying to line up another one. Evilar trying to get to it. Not going to happen, and now Butler will look to corner the Huskies in, or perhaps put that exclamation point on this semifinal. 100 ticks left in regulation. Evie Lard with the right foot. The Huskies just looking to find perhaps a mistake, an error, anything that they could capitalize on as the official motions for a Connecticut throw. 120 left in regulation. The Huskies in their return to the Big East Tournament looking for a magical moment. And that nearly led to at least a shot opportunity. 
This one sent away as we reach the final minute. Harnett. Zaccanini. Now a run from out wide. And a service that does no harm. And Butler could really take this one down to, I don't know, maybe about 20 seconds or so. It's going to be very difficult at this point for UConn to generate anything. Butler needs just one more touch to get it above midfield if they can. And there it is. That is it. 20 seconds left. Connecticut, gritty, finding a 79th minute goal from Alina Kuzis. Final seconds ticking down. For the third time in four seasons, the Butler Bulldogs will play in the Big East Women's Soccer Championship game. Yeah, just a tremendous team effort by the Bulldogs here this afternoon and into the evening in Providence. And they have earned themselves a date with Georgetown on Sunday as they advance to the final game. Just outstanding play. And, you know, for UConn, I felt like they just maybe uh, waited a little bit too long to find that urgency. It took the goal from Kuzis. That really took them into another gear. But by that point, it was almost too little, too late. And Butler just an overall great game as they were able to really control the pace of this one. The two powers of the Big East over these recent years will once again meet for the championship. And while Georgetown has been the queen of this conference, Butler looks and feels poised to try to pull it off. Mike Mancuso, great to be with you for this one. Yeah, same here. And here's that excellent goal from Skoglin. That made it 1-0. Butler would get another one later on in the second half. The final touch is coming in was Wood and then Kuzis. A chance for UConn that went in as well. For our producer Kevin Brown and our great crew and Mike Mancuso, my partner, this is John Fanta saying good night from Providence. Join us Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern time on FS1. Butler and Georgetown for the Big East women's soccer title. Good night, everybody. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. 